Hi again. I'm sure many of you practice recycling plastics, but if you ever look more closely at that recycling symbol, in the middle of it is a number. And that number tells us a lot about the plastic or material that made it. Today's program is about one of those plastics. They're called addition polymers. Let's start by looking at how they're put together. We begin a polymer with a monomer, one part, a starting material. In my case, I'm going to start with three molecules of ethene, a two carbon molecule. The process begins with an initiator, and an initiator breaks apart the double bond, producing a radical. Remember, radicals are highly reactive species. That free electron on the carbon can then induce a nearby molecule to also break apart. Those two can now join together to make a larger unit. And this process can repeat itself, breaking ethene molecule after ethene molecule apart and joining them. Here I show the product as three repeating units of that monomer. This could also be called a polymer made of many parts. But the difference being, a polymer consists of thousands of repeating units, not just three. So we often summarize the process in the following equation where we have n numbers of monomer units and resulting in n repeating units in my polymer. As mentioned earlier, I started here with ethene and finished with a molecule called polyethene. It's worth noting in that name polyethene that there actually are no double bonds present as they broke apart to form the polymer. Let's look at the properties of polyethene for a moment. First of all, it can join together in long linear chains that can stack easily together. But also by putting in catalysts and various amounts of my starting materials, I can also induce the formation of chains with branches on them. These have different properties, although they're both called polyethene. First of all, they can have the London dispersion force that exists between them because the molecules themselves are not polar, but they are very large. The ones that can stack close together get very strong London dispersion forces, whereas the ones with branch chains tend to have weaker London dispersion forces. This leads to a difference in their properties. The first are called high density polyethylene, and indeed they are a denser material and they would tend to sink in water, but they make harder plastics. Perhaps you have a water bottle that's made of this material. You can check by looking at the bottom of it and see if you see the recycling number two on it. Your softer squeeze bottles or plastic bags are made out of low density polyethylene, and you'll see the number four on the bottom of it. There are also some other polymers we can make, starting with basically the ethene molecule and substituting groups on it. So here, if I put a chlorine in place of one of the hydrogens, I start with chloroethene and can make polychloroethene. In older times, this was named vinyl chloride and hence the polymer polyvinyl chloride. And that particular material is found a lot in plastic piping. The next molecule I have tetrafluoroethene, and I can make from it polytetrafluoroethene. We know it more commonly as the chemical Teflon, which is often put on coatings to prevent sticking. It's also used in many rainwear. My last molecule, propene, I'm gonna show you drawing it is a little bit more difficult. It's best if we visualize that methyl group on the right end of the molecule as bending in the upward position so that we can focus on the action around the double bond. So when that double bond breaks, we have attachment points at either end of the double bond, not at the end of a three carbon chain. It's only attachment points at the ends of the double bond. And that then forms the following polymer with branches of methyl appearing on alternating carbons. This is called prolipropene. And we also know it as polypropylene. And perhaps you've seen that yellow rope you might pick up from Canadian Tire is made of that particular material. Can you work backwards? What I mean by that is if we start with the structure of the polymer, can you figure out what the material was that started it? This is called polystyrene. You can recognize in it the aromatic ring or benzene ring. I'm putting red marks on here to show the three repeating units. And now what I have to do is unfold those electrons, folding them back into the formation of the double bond. And I can then recognize my starting material, also called styrene. We know it more commonly sometimes as styrofoam, and it's given the number six. So that serves as an introduction to one class of polymers, the addition polymers. There's also condensation polymers. 
which you'll come across a little bit if you take the biochemistry unit.